Hi, th thanks, Steve. And yeah, it's uh, great to be back in back in Dublin, where I suppose my career all started. And thanks to Ralph and the team for having us here. So yeah, I'm Johnny Furlong from L and Q. So. Um, for those who don't know LNQ, we are a really large housing association. Um, so, uh, we're, we're, uh, so just sort of in terms of sort of our sort of size and scope, um, we have about eight and a half uh, thousand uh, estates, which in uh, Irish terms is like more. We've more estates than there is pubs in Ireland, uh, which is which is interesting. Um, so that sort of translates into about one, 1, 120,000 homes, um, which is about a quarter of a million people, which in Dublin terms would be about um, every fifth person would live in an L&Q property in Greater Dublin. So that sort of gives you the sort of size of us. Um, and a lot of what we're doing around uh, and where our sort of BIM and digital journey has came from has really sort of is, is started evolving heavily after the Grenfell tragedy in 2017 um, in London. Obviously, I know we're, we're speaking to an international audience here. So there was a fire um, in a tower block um, and tragically 72 people lost their lives. From that, the industry really started to shift and change and a report came out called Building a Safer Future. Um, then the bill started going through the UK, UK Parliament. Um, and then, uh, uh, la uh, and then um, last uh, earlier, I think actually there's, so, there's a typo here, but like yeah, uh, royal assent has now been achieved on the bill, which basically means now that this bill is starting to become law. And what it's going to mean is by October 2023, for all reg all buildings that fall within scope of this, there's going to be certain things that are need to happen to do with mandatory reporting. There will be a, um, an accountable person, uh, juices will come in. For new bills, there's a gateway two and three process, which is hard stops through it. Um, and from sort of some of the talk that we'll be doing today from my end, it's really about having this golden thread of information, which a lot of uh, people in the industry have been talking about. Um, and hopefully, we'll, I'll, I'll try to get you a little bit of that for everyone here today. Yeah, so for us, it's a, I think there's a really, really exciting journey, this whole journey that we're on, our digital journey in, in LQ. Um, and it is really, really complicated to get right. Um, and uh, and it's really, really complicated in very, very large estates, um, existing estates, because we have uh, all our new builds coming through, so we are a developer. We also work as a principal contractor, but we mainly have to take care of all our existing estate that we have. Um, and it's about how do we take this really, really complicating and really simplify it down so that we can deliver. And a big part for, of this is around the golden thread. So um, the technical definition of what a, a golden thread in the UK is, is up on the screen. So the golden thread is the information that allows you to understand a building and the steps needed to keep both the building and people safe now and, and in the future. So it, it, importantly, I think the big point here isn't just the information, but it's a step. So it's what are you going to do with that information is really, really important. Um, and I suppose then looking at like how we are going to, how our thought process is, how we're going to be, be doing this and how we're going to introduce uh, the Golden Tread and LNQ. Um, we, we do, we're, we're looking at doing this by really improving how we understand our, and manage our buildings. Um, and it's, for us, it's really about being in control of the design, build, and operational phases. And our approach to doing this is by controlling information down at the individual component level. So for us, a component is like a door, a pump, um, th that type of thing. And what we want to do is try to control down at the component level using uh, fi our five principles, our five pillars. Um, and those five pillars are the what, where, when, who, and why. So, uh, with, so sorry, one second. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, so, and, and what, as well as controlling sort of like the, uh, so, so, so these five pillars are all about 
how we see the, the core task. So what it's really about, as I said, the, what information is required at each stage of design, construction and in use phase. And this is all based on our standards. Uh, where the information then is, is managed, and for us that's going to be using a online platform. Um, when the information is required um, is basically when the information is required and we try to link this through to our information management our document management platforms uh, importantly like who is meant to deliver the, inf the information so this is true information delivery planning who is meant to give you what information and when um, and really importantly and this came up in one of the other uh, conversations earlier about why are you collecting the information I think too often we set out with we need information and just because it, it's, it's, it's no point you need to understand why you're collecting the information the information that you might collect why is different during the design phase than it is during the operational phase so you shouldn't be handing over the information that you needed during the design phase into operations if it's not needed you only hand over the information that's required to maintain the assets so uh, the, the what where when uh, why and who gives us this are principles uh, to bring into our digital golden shred of information. Um, and, to, and then what we try to do then is to have this much greater level of control. Um, and on top of those are five principles, we have sort of the, 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 the if there are principles, then we also need to have sort of our, um, sort of our maybe call it a sort of technology stack if that's what you want to call it but it's not all technology so the first part and probably the hardest part to do is the knowledge and information requirements so if we're going to be saying to people we want some information how do you know what that is and that is probably probably the hardest part and that is about talking to the knowledge experts talking to our talking to maintenance teams talking to your contractors really understanding what your business requires and that part is definitely the hardest um, we are then looking at having document management systems so we are looking at having enterprise-wide document management systems um, based on SharePoint and I know we're going to be having a conversation I believe about this later on so I'll, I'll leave a little bit of that but our, I, our principles of document management are the same of data we should be using master data uh, management to manage our documents, i.e. that is one document ever only in one place and all our systems come in and use those documents. Um, we are then obviously looking at updating our uh, the data and our database systems are really, really important. So just for instance, in our design phase, it's generally about 80% documents and 20% data used to deliver a building. Once you move into the operational phase, it's the opposite. There is way, way more data, very little documents, and that needs to be considered when you're asking for your information requirements and how you're going to collect that information. If you're looking at the end in mind and being looking at wanting to manage your assets, these are the types of things that you need to think about. We then start looking at all of our sort of directing tools. So these are how do we actually ask for information? And these are things like our employer's requirements, looking at our contracts. And somebody said in, in one of the conversations I was having earlier, look at doing this through your existing framework and not trying to build some other extra com complexity on top of it. We already have really good mechanisms in standard JCT contracts and others on how to request information and how to enforce that through contract so we're also try to do it as simply as possible through it and then on top of all of that is the specialist BIM tools so these are things like uh, 360 photography your 3D coordination your 4D your field services tools anything that you want to do on top of that are our specialist tools and they sort of actually almost come last well I think a lot of people focus on embedding all of these tools into their business first for us they are they really are tools it's much more important to have your information managed so a little bit then of just sort of where we are moving on with this and our journey so far so for us some of the really big benefits of this aren't maybe what you would think they're really about us having 
what, as we go through and try to understand what our information requirements are, we're understanding our business better and we're able to make process improvements. And it's really been, been about standardising and structuring our information. It's still really, really complicated and we're still on the journey. But it's also helping us, giving us a really clear path forward of how we want to operate as a business. Um, so yeah, that's uh, uh, hopefully just given a very quick overview of what we're doing and hopefully lead on to the interesting part which is questions with my fellow presenters. Thank you.